There's one thing that does that, caloric restriction. Caloric restriction has been repeatedly shown to increase lifespan and delay the onset of age-associated pathologies in laboratory mice and rats. For more than 60 years, the only dietary manipulation known to retard aging was caloric restriction, in which a variety of species respond to a res reduction in energy intake by demonstrating extended mean and maximum lifespan. Nothing else is anything, 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 anything like that level uh, of issues. Um, you will often hear people claiming that this pill or that pill um, has been shown to do these things, and they're always cheating in one sense or another. Whenever you see anyone saying anything about a pill, look at the numbers. Because, for instance, if you go over to Side Out Life Extension, you will see every day posting to the effect that B vitamins and RNA and half a dozen other damn things have extended mean and maximum lifespan, and it's just not true. Uh, a healthy, well-maintained mouse in the lab will live on average for about 900 days and the maximum lifespan, which is to say the average lifespan of the longest lived decile, will live about 1,200 days or so. Um, if they don't meet those numbers at the control group, it's not relevant. Uh, if you've got a bunch of mice that are all dying in the 500-day range, which literally is the case with the B5 study, that um, it's because you're killing them with something. It's not because you're doing anything interesting. Uh, with the supplement when you extend that to a whopping five or six hundred days. Um, so it, it, keep those numbers in mind. Uh, you, you've got to see compared to healthy rodents, compared to healthy people. Um, I'm going to skip through a lot of the rest of this stuff, but I cite a couple of studies where they've tested, tested zillions and zillions of antioxidants in particular, uh, and they just don't expend, extend lifespan when you start off with healthy animals. You just don't. Um, we saw a bit of one of these yesterday. Uh, Dr. Prola put out some of the results from the LEF lifespan study, which unfortunately still hasn't been published. Um, here are the complete results to the best of my knowledge. I, folks who were at the last conference saw uh, these numbers, and unfortunately these, this will not be at all clear, but you've got it at, at your house, at your house, in your hands. Um, so, I mean, you've got, uh, you know, CoQ10 plus lipoic acid plus amino guanidine plus pregnenolone You've got uh, melatonin, you've got melatonin with pregnenolone, um, on and on and on and on. CoQ10, CoQ10 plus lipoic acid plus NADH plus alcar, yada, 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 yada. They all look just like the control group except for the ones that you don't feed as much food. Um, and you can find this in, in many different places. So without belaboring the point, uh, at this point, that really is the situation with supplements is there really isn't anything uh, that's got anything like um, the effect of CR, and at that point, you really almost should just stop discussion. So bearing in mind that everything we talk about in supplements is, is not like that. Um, again, I've got a bunch of stuff on some of the large-scale, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trials, um, which have been done, and I referenced them all, and again, I'm going to skip through them mostly very quickly. Um, the basic point here is there was a lot of promising-looking science um, done on a lot of these supplements, alpha tocopherol, beta carotene in particular, um, wax and wax of evidence convinced a lot of scientists that these things were going to, if nothing else, you know, cut down your odds of heart disease or cancer. They've done them in really big controlled trials and they don't work. They just don't work. Uh, and we have a lot more knowledge about those supplements at the time that these trials were initiated and now we have more and that may suggest some of the reasons why they went wrong. Uh, but the, the fact is we, we knew a lot more about those supplements than we do about any of the novel cutting-edge stuff that I'm going to talk to you about or that you're going to read about in uh, assorted people's propaganda in the next years to come. Um, and they failed. So, I mean, we have to keep this in mind that, I mean, thus far, you know, whether we're talking about heart disease or cancer, whatever you want to look at, um, it just hasn't worked over and over and over and over again. Okay. Now, but you say, well, it can't hurt. Um, well, it can hurt. In fact, in a lot of cases, it does hurt. Um, uh, the, the one that I've harped on quite a few times uh, is retinol. Uh, that's preformed vitamin A. That does not mean carotenoids. Um, there is now a lot of prospective epidemiology, as well as a few case control studies, showing that higher intake or serum levels of retinol does increase your fracture risk by quite a substantial amount. Uh, the old RDA, I won't get into the details, the old RDA for 
uh, vitamin A was for total retina, total vitamin A equivalents. It was not saying you should be consuming 5,000 IU of retinol, but everyone took it to mean that. So you have supplements that contained 5,000 to 10,000 IU of preformed retinol, and as a lot of result, a lot of people ended up with fractures uh, that they didn't have to have. Um, yeah. Um, another one you see left, right, and center, you still see left, right, and center, even though we've known this for 20 years. Too much zinc or too much zinc without enough copper. Uh, they compete for ligands. That's both at the uh, absorption phase because it's active transport mechanism um, and also at the level of the actual biomolecular ligands. So uh, you've got something in your body that requires copper as a cofactor. You put too much zinc in the system, the zinc starts getting in the way of the copper binding. And the result of that you see in controlled trials in humans, uh, if you get a, a zinc to copper ratio of 23.5, it lowers your levels of uh, cytosolic uh, superoxide dismutase, it elevates their total cholesterol and their LDL cholesterol, it lowers their LDL cholesterol, it reduces their formation of enkephalins for whatever that's worth. Those are um, sort of opioid-like compounds made in your body. Um, causes cardiac abnormalities. This is uh, a heart blockage and tachycardia and a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, bad stuff. Uh, there's a, a case study, well it wasn't a case study, it was a, a, a deliberate experiment but they only had one subject so I mean obviously not much in terms of statistical significance here but they took one subject and uh, they gave him a, a zinc to copper ratio of 16 and uh, his cer cer ceruloplasmin, which is a copper based antioxidant in your body uh, was decreased, his cholesterol went to hell, and he developed arrhythmia. Um, those are very common supplemental ratios. You will see very commonly uh, multivitamins that contain 20 or 30 milligrams of zinc and one milligram or no milligrams uh, of copper. And that that's just bad for you. Like, that is just going to kill you. Um, Seriously, and and those are in, in short-term studies studying only those things. What we know about copper deficiency in other in other areas, um, you know, from classical copper deficiency as opposed to supplement-induced copper deficiency, uh, is that if you are copper deficient, you're going to have impaired bone metabolism. Your glucose control is going to go to hell, and over and above your poor glucose control, you're going to see increased formation of advanced glycation end products. So, yeah. Anyone that tells you, well, it can't hurt and it might help, these are natural supplements, yada, 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 horseshit. Um, excess manganese, I won't get too far into that, but there's a, a disorder called uh, manganism, uh, which you see in welders and few industrial exposures. Um, plenty of studies, at least on too much uh, uh, manganese from those sources. Some suggestive data from manganese in the water. It's not clear what we're talking about with food here, but too much manganese, which a lot of us already have quite high manganese intake because we eat a lot of vegetables. Um, yeah, uh, it, it seems to be associated with neurological, bad neurological findings. Uh, and again, you see this very commonly. People had this goofy notion that because manganese is required to make mitochondrial superoxide dismutase, that if you pump yourself full of manganese, you're going to have more MN sod, and that first off isn't true. Um, secondly, even if it is true, it probably is irrelevant, but I won't get into that. And thirdly, you're damaging your nerves um, in all probability. So, yeah, this, this is not good for you. Uh, other things that are a bit more hypothetical, um, people are probably getting at least familiar with this, uh, alpha-tocopherol supplements. When you, for reasons I won't get into uh, evolutionarily, there, there's a different transport mechanism for alpha-tocopherol as opposed to other vitamin E molecules. And the result of that is there is a selective... Uh, absorption and retention of alpha-tocopherol relative to other um, vitamin E molecules. And the result is when you supplement with a lot of alpha-tocopherol, well, I, I say a lot, if you supplement with hardly any alpha-tocopherol, uh, you depress levels of gamma-tocopherol. And mechanistically and in terms of a few animal studies, it looks increasingly as this gamma-tocopherol is the good vitamin E, really, in terms of your long-term health as opposed to in terms of your fertility, which is why this mechanism evolved in the first place. Um, so, examples, um, you feed people just 100 IU of alpha-tocopherol, you end up with, and, and in, in one particular study it looks, although the data is not quite clear, as if as little as 31 IU of alpha-tocopherol, uh, unbalanced by other tocopherols, and you end up with gamma-tocopherol levels that are below the baseline level of someone just eating a normal 
quote, healthy, close quote, diet. Um, if you have a year at relatively high dosages, so 1,200 IU of alpha-tocopherol, your tissue gamma tocopherol levels take two years to recover after you stop taking the pill. Um, there's, there's a supplement, there's a, a study done by Lester Packer just recently um, based on his, um, what did he call it, uh, s Packer had a supplement he put out, it was yeah, yeah. network antioxidants, okay. So it had a significant amount of alpha-tocopherol, but it also had a significant amount of non alpha vitamin E molecules, and you'd think that would be enough to deal with it. Well, it wasn't. Um, in the supplement, as he fed it, there was 371 milligrams of alpha-tocopherol balanced by more than 400 milligrams of all the other tocopherols and tocotrienols combined. Uh, you would think that you know having all those things would be more than enough to overcome that effect I just described. Instead, uh, you still saw a 30% depletion relative to just eating a normal healthy diet uh, in gamma tocopherol levels. And we, we know from rodent experiments this probably happens with gamma and alpha tocotrienol as well. Um, we also know that alpha tocopherol blocks the hypocholesteremic effect of tocotrienols uh, on HMG CoA reductase if it amounts to more than about 30% of the supplement that's been shown in, in rodent studies and there's suggested evidence for the same thing in the human studies when you compare the results of different trials. So, you know, there is nothing stupider than taking a pill to extend your life and killing yourself with it. So this is serious um, and has to be taken seriously. I'm, I'm honestly not going to spend my entire time telling you not to take supplements, but there's a lot of issues and you really have to be looking at what you're doing before you start putting these things in your body. Fair enough? <clears throat> okay, um, I, sh I should sort of qualify that last paranoia about the alpha tocopherol, which is that despite the fact that for a variety of mechanistic reasons you would predict that alpha tocopherol supplements should be killing people left, right, and center, it, if, I mean, none of the trials reported that, right? None of the trials reported increased heart disease in people taking the supplements. There was, in a couple of, there, there is in one epidemiological study a non-significant trend towards a dose-dependent increased risk of prostate cancer uh, in people taking uh, alpha tocopherol supplements as you go from 100 IU up to 400 IU. And because there is epidemiological evidence now from uh, at least two cohorts I'm aware of um, indicating that uh, gamma tocopherol is protective against prostate cancer, whereas alpha tocopherol probably is not. That does sort of suggest that this might have a real health impact in the real world, but again, it's a non-significant trend, so I don't want to make too much of it. Um, I'll get into the issue around synthetic beta-carotene uh, in a moment. It says above, it should really say below, but yeah, I mean, beta-carotene, I mean, everyone says beta-carotene supplements, at, uh, everyone 20 years ago was saying beta-carotene is your best antioxidant, um, and well, it didn't do that. I mean, in, in the trials, it seems to have actually increased cancer uh, in the people it was given to. Um, yeah. So, um, granted all that, um, should we take supplements at all? Um, if so, why and how much? Um, s if you've been on the list for a while and if you follow my posts, you might remember a, a supplement list I made a few years ago. Uh, in which I prioritize tier one, tier two, tier, th tier three in terms of importance and so forth. I'm going to more or less work within that framework, but it's changed quite a bit. And uh, there's a much bigger issue here around, you know, evidence issues as opposed to, um, well, anyway. And I've also got a much better idea today about, you know, what the real evidence behind these supplements is. So I'm going to work within that same broad framework. Um, at least some supplementation is probably necessary for CR folks. Um, first off, to avoid deficiencies, and by that I mean uh, the RDAs. Um, the new Institute of Medicine's dietary reference intakes, which include an RDA and several other measures of, of dietary adequacy, um, are grounded in really good science. I mean, you read supplement company propaganda, and they hack down the RDA all the time. The new RDAs really are good science. I mean, if they say you should be having such and such an amount of manganese, um, probably you don't need any more. Uh, the only real exception, and, uh, and you can read, by the way, the, the IOM has put up uh, the dietary reference intake books online, uh, and you can print them off page by page from PDF file. Um, it takes a long time to do that, but you can do it. And I think if you really read your way through those suckers, uh, you're going to be pretty impressed by the documentation that goes behind most of the nutrients they cover. 
Um, the one real exception I would highlight, uh, vitamin D, um, both based on evidence that was already available.